Welcome. My name is Brandon. Please join me on this tour of Colonial Mall in St. Michael, Minnesota, located about 30 miles northwest of Minneapolis. Twin Cities residents may be more familiar with the Albertville Outlet Mall, located a mere three miles north of Colonial, right off of Interstate 94 in Albertville, Minnesota. Colonial Mall was the right size for what was once a rural Minnesota town when it opened in the late 1970s. In 1980, St. Michael had a population of 1,500 residents. By 2020, the town's population had exploded to over 10 times the size, to a whopping 18,000 residents. This is the only thing I really did not like about Colonial. What caused someone to kick in the door? Did someone have too many beers at the bowling alley and couldn't wait any longer? I was frankly uncomfortable in this restroom, especially when I was testing out the deadbolt. A man practically burst into the room. The Alleluia Lutheran Church moved into their own space at the beginning of 2021. Colonial is a decent mall for the local community. While its tenants have changed in its over 40 years, it has always been more than a retail mall. Early tenants of Colonial Mall included Adair Liquors, Duber's Variety Store, Snyder's Drug, a hardware store, and a library. A bowling alley, originally called Crow River Lanes, opened in 1983. Dubers left the mall sometime in the 1990s. I'd never heard of Dubers, but my wife was familiar with their location in downtown Laconia. If you can't find it at Dubers, you don't need it. When the entire Dubers chain closed in 2013, they were down to nine stores. The CEO, Chuck Duber, blamed competition from big box stores moving into the area and the internet. The CEO also said that people are willing to drive 30 to 40 miles if necessary for the selection of goods they want. By the time the Dubers chain closed, Waconia residents didn't have to drive 30 miles to visit a Target. There was one less than a mile outside of town. Getting back to Colonial Mall, the St. Michael Library moved out in 2010 into its own space. Not too long after that, a post office moved into the mall. I did not know a thing about Colonial when I first visited, so I assumed it was just the one hallway. After turning around, I literally thought to myself, oh wow, there's more to this mall. Colonial Mall has had several kinds of tenants through the years, including executive office space, churches, a driving school, a dance studio, fast food, and the previously mentioned retail. As a coffee fanatic, one former business that stuck out to me was Sadie's Cafe. They opened as a coffee shop in the early 2010s that expanded into having a kitchen that served breakfast and lunch. On the morning of October 25th, 2017, a large smash was heard right outside of Sadie's Cafe, startling customers. A deer had crashed through the main entrance of the mall. A few minutes later, one of the cafe's cooks helped the frightened animal escape, minus one antler. The antler was later mounted in the cafe. The Star Tribune article that shares this story ends it by stating that Richard Walden, one of the co-owners of Sadie's, helped repair the mall's front door. While the deer story is fascinating, I love that last part of the story. Colonial is a family-owned mall, and this is such a Midwest thing to do. While Midwest nice often describes her passive aggressiveness, 
It can also describe our willingness to get people out of a jam. We will run out of our homes during blizzards to help people get their cars unstuck. I even have a neighbor who will snowblow the entire block's public sidewalk. Unfortunately, Sadie's had to close in 2018. The owner of the bowling alley, now called Big Al's Bowling, expanded into the former Sadie space with the alley grill. They opened up a window between the two spaces so people could watch bowling from the bar. The owners of the former Sadie's Cafe still have a business in the mall called Midwest Rubs. They have provided spices to the Alley Grill and other restaurants. Individuals can also purchase spices from their website, so feel free to check them out. I wish I had had a chance to try out Sadie's Cafe when it was open. The food on their old Facebook page looked really tasty. As for Big Al's Bowling Bar and Grill, in 2022, there was no longer any mention of the kitchen, but photos and video of the place show it can get rather busy. I love finding these small town enclosed malls. These hallways, they allow people to set up tables to sell goods in the dead of winter. Do you live in St. Michael? How often do you visit Colonial? Thank you for joining me on this tour of Colonial Mall. I hope you have a good day. Take care.